attend the Princess France and Burgundy, Gloucester. I shall, my liege. Meantime, we shall express our darker purpose. Uh, give me the map there. Know that we have divided in three our kingdom, and it's our fast intent to shake all cares and business from our age, conferring them on younger strengths while we, unburdened, crawl toward death. Our son of Cornwall, and you are no less loving son of Albany, we have this hour a constant wish to publish our daughter's several dowers that future strife may be prevented now. The princes, France and Burgundy, great rivals in our youngest daughter's love, long in our court hath made their amorous sojourn and here are to be answered. Tell me, my daughters, which of you, shall we say, doth love us most? That we our largest bounty may extend where nature doth with merit challenge. Goneril Adelus Vaughan, speak first. Sir, I love you more than word can wield the matter, dearer than eyesight, space, and liberty, beyond what can be valued, rich or rare, no less than life, with grace, health, beauty, honor, as much as child e'er loved or father found, a love that makes breath poor and speech unable, beyond all manner of so much. I love you. What shall Cordelia speak? Love and be silent. Of all these bounds, even from this line to this, with shadowy forests and with champions rich with plenteous rivers and wide-skirted meads, we make thee, lady, to thine and all that is issue be this perpetual. <laughs> what says our second daughter, our dearest Regan, wife of Cornwall? Speak. I am made of that self-metal as my sister, and price me at her worth. In my true heart, I find she names my very deed of love. Uh, Only, she comes too short. Oh, 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 oh. That I profess myself an enemy to all other joys which the most precious square of sense possesses, and find I am alone felicitate in your dear highness love. And poor Cordelia. And yet not so, since I am sure my love is more generous than my tongue. To thee and thine hereditary ever remain this ample third of our fair kingdom, no less in space, validity, and worth than that received by Goneril. <laughs> now, our, our joy, <laughs> although our last not least, for whose young love uh, the vines of France and milk of Burgundy strive for the interest, what can you say to gain a third more opulent than your sisters? Speak. Nothing, my lord. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing. <laughs> nothing will come of nothing. <laughs> I speak again. Unhappy that I am, I cannot heave my heart into my mouth. I love your majesty according to my bond, no more nor less. Oh, now, Cordelia, mend your speech a little, lest it may mar your fortunes. Good, my lord, you have begot me, bred me, loved me. I return those duties back as our right fit, obey you, love you, and most honor you. Why have my sister's husbands, if they say they love you all, 
Haply when I shall wed that lord whose hand shall take my plight shall carry half my love with him, half my care and duty. Sure I shall never marry like my sisters to love my father all. Goes thy heart with this? I, my good lord. So young, so untender. So young, my lord, and true. Let it be so. Thy truth, then, be thy dower. For by the sacred radiance of the sun, here I disclaim all my paternal care for Pinkwood again, property of love, and as a stranger to my heart and me, hold thee from this forever. Good my liege. She's Kent. Come not between the dragon and his wrath. I loved her most and thought to set my rest on her kind nursery. Hence and avoid my sight. So be my grave, my peace, as here I give her father's heart from her. Call France. Who says? Call Burgundy. Conwell and Albany, with my two daughters' dowers, digest this third. Let pride, which she calls plainness, marry her. I do invest you jointly with my power, preeminence, and all the large effects that troop with majesty. Ourself, by monthly course, with reservation of a hundred knights, by you to be sustained, shall with you our abode make by two turns. Only we shall retain the name and all the addition of a king. The rest, revenue, sway, beloved sons, be yours. Which to confirm, this coronet part betwixt you. Royal Lear, whom I have ever honored as my king. The bow is bent and drawn, make from the shaft. Let it fall, rather, though the fork invade the region of my heart. Be Kent unmannerly when Lear is mad. What wouldst thou do, old man? Thinkst thou the duty shall have dread to speak when power to flattery bows? To plainness, honor's bound when majesty stoops to folly. Now answer my life, my judgment. Thy youngest daughter doth not love thee least. Nor are those empty-hearted whose low sounds reverb no hollowness. Kent, on thy life, no more. <laughs> my life. I never held but as a pawn to wage against thine enemies, nor fear to lose it, thy safety being motive. Out of my sight! See better, Lear, and let me still remain the true blank of thine eye. Now, by Apollo! Now, by Apollo, king, thou swearest thy gods in vain! Oh, vassal, recreant! Yes, sir! Forbear! Forbear! Revoke thy gift, or whilst I can give clamor from my throat, I'll tell thee thou dost evil. Hear me, recreant. On thine allegiance, hear me. Five days we do allow thee for provision to shield thee from the dangers of the world, and on the sixth to turn thy hated back upon our kingdom. If on the tenth day following thy banished trunk be found on our dominions, the moment is thy death. By Jupiter, away, this shall not be revoked. Fare thee well, King. Sith thus thou wilt appear, freedom lives hence and banishment is here. The gods to thy dear shelter take thee, maid, who justly thinks and hast most rightly said. Thus Kent, O oh, princes, bids you all adieu. He'll shape his old course in a country new.